I've had a few questions on wooden planes, wedges, um, mouth, flatness, how to replace them. So maybe I can show you a little bit of what to look for when you're buying them, when you're in the shops, when you can actually lay your hands on them before you purchase them. When you do it through the internet, it's kind of a gamble. The pictures are better, but you can usually email those guys, maybe get a tighter shot of something, look at it, ask direct questions. So condition. Hit it from the rear, pull the wedge out. Keep your hand under the bottom. Be sure that the iron doesn't fall out. Look at the condition of the wedge. Are the points together? Same distance? Any splitting? This one has a little divot there. A little divot there, but you're going to get that from use from the, wet, the chips hitting it. And check the flatness. This one is in pretty good shape. Important, look at the bottom of the plane. Check the flatness of the plane. How wide the mouth is. Checks and cracks at the mouth. With the iron out, I like to put the wedge back in and push it forward a little bit. And what I'm looking for is is the tip of the wedge to the outside edge of the mouth. Chips will gather and they will bunch and it is a pain to keep your mouth clear if they do. This one's in pretty good shape. You want to look at the top of the wedge. Most people will hit that with metal and it will just get it shaved down to nothing and mushroomed out. You can clean it up some or you can replace it. Apply the iron back into the plane. Put your finger at the mouth. Keep your finger up inside the mouth. Tighten it up. Put the wedge in the plane and set it just a little bit. Difficult to see. Where the top edge of the wedge meets the plane, you want that to be tight. With the iron in and forward, what you don't want to see is the tip of the wedge protruding beyond the bevel of the iron. Most likely this is not the wedge that came with this plane. Now if it's protruding, you can shorten it and bring it back up, but you have to bring a little bit of an angle and keep a point. You don't want anywhere for a chip to catch. And when I get a toothing iron for this, I'll have to reset this wedge. This is your iron. This is your wedge. Side body of the plane. You want to be sure that the tip comes here and meets the side body of the plane as tight as you can. Your chip breaker, now that's exaggerated, you're going to have a tighter distance between the edge of the chip breaker and the, and the bevel of the iron. But as the chip comes across you want it to hit the brake and start the curl and be able to move forward. So the points should be above the chip breaker just ever so slightly. Iron, chip breaker, wedge. You want a continuous flow. As it goes across the chip breaker, makes the wedge and is able to escape and curl up. If the wedge protrudes, they will catch and bunch and it's not going to be a good deal. Most of these older planes are set here to here. At 10 degrees. Cut your stock length you need, a little longer. Get your 10 degrees. 
start fitting your wedge. Once you get your wedge fit good, then you can then remove your material for the mouth and if needed, remove the back for the screw clearance. And then you can start working on the material and removing here. Whatever method you choose for material, whether you chisel it by hand, slow and easy, and just sneak up on it. You'll be able to make you a wedge. Reduced it. I got my thickness. I cut my thickness. I bandsawed this. I marked these, chiseled this out. And then I took a router, and because of the screw, I wanted a little clearance, and I removed some material here. But you can see my wedge replacement is much different. The thickness is the same. Mine is wider. Jack plane. Matter of fact, the one we were holding just a few minutes ago. It's for your rough work. Joiner or try. As you can tell, I have worked on the bottom to get it flat. And I, I get a large piece of glass and some rolled sandpaper a little bit longer than the length of the plane I make chalk lines see where my high and my low spots are I check for consistency with a good straight edge you can set it flat use winding sticks on it to look but you're reaching for absolute flatness on these keep them old and sealed as much as possible that helps helps it as well good old coffin smoother these are my favorites and they do just as good as a number four the only difference is is setting the cut is a little bit harder because you have to move it with a hammer if you guys got any questions um, I try to answer them as best as I can I'm not an expert nor a pro at this I just I chose the wooden planes Mainly, I, I don't know really why. Um, I like the time period. I like the way that they work. I like the metal. There's something in the way that they're they're steel and iron put together instead of just being O1 or A2, one chunk of metal that you sharpen on the new blades. I'm not knocking those either, but there's wisdom into the old methods. There's a reason why samurai swords are two pieces of metal put together and the Japanese chisels are two pieces of metal put together and there's a reason why they cost what they do and you can spend what you can on them and men are still making them by hand to each his own